Ambassador as well. So, uh, Kalimera, and greetings from India. My name is Swami Nathan. I am the CEO of Iris. I'm extremely uh -huh. honored to welcome uh, His Excellency the Ambassador of India to Greece, who's Amrit Lohan. I'm also delighted to invite uh, the commercial representative Mr. Gopal Ram. Uh, it's also an honor on, on, on the panel, uh, Mr. Karaskakis Dimitris, Chief Economy Officer of the Athex Group. I'm also grateful to have uh, Mr. John Kiriakopoulos, President of the Hellenic Investors Association in Athens, and uh, Mr. Fanis Matsopoulos, who's a member of the Board of Directors of the Athens Chamber of Commerce and Industry. I speak a few words in Greek because as it so happened many, many years ago when I was a student in America, I, the first professor I had to meet was a Greek professor. His name was John Ginokopoulos. And uh, to impress the professor, I learned a few sentences in Greek. So I walked up to his office, knocked on the door, and said, uh, Kalimera. Now, I did not know that he spoke no Greek. Then I followed up by saying, since he was busy working on something, so I said, Isi uh, apres He said, what? That's when it struck me that he had no understanding of Greek. But my Greek pronunciation was so bad that he said, uh, I don't speak Hindi. Hindi being the language, is the national language of India. But as it turned out, the professor and I became very good friends. And instead of learning all the bad words in Greek, I learned all the good words in Greek. And uh, that's how I get to show off a little bit about of my Greek knowledge today. I'm grateful to all of you for being here today for the launch of what we call the India Cares Initiative. It's inspired by our prime minister who basically talks about the fact that the world is one family. When the world is one family, when you have a pandemic, I think we have an obligation to take care of each other. We have an obligation to be nice to each other because there is life after the pandemic when hopefully all of us in our respective countries will join hands and move forward. Today, we don't know where the vaccine will come from. It will come from one country. It will be used in other countries. And therefore, the concept of the world being one family is what drives us to the seminar where we talk about our India Cares Initiative. Yeah, I was looking at the trade statistics between India and, and Greece. While it's true that India's trade with the rest of the world has actually dropped, and even though the share of the Greek trade to India is actually very small, the fact is between April and August 2020, the share of Greece in India's total imports has actually doubled compared to the previous year. It's still a very, very small percentage, but I think it talks, it basically illustrates the inelastic nature of the basket of imports from Greece into India. Of course, you will also know that there's been a significant drop in Indian tourist arrivals to Greece. Uh, Greece has been mounting a huge uh, initiative in Mumbai, the city where I live, inviting people to come and visit uh, Greece. Uh, I know in the last one year, at least 10 or 15 of my friends have actually gone to Mykonos and gone to Greece and spent a wonderful time there. So Greece is an extremely important country. And I think once the pandemic eases, I think Greece will be the preferred vacation spot for many, many, many Indians. This again offers an opportunity to cement our relationship even further. So what is the context? Why are we doing the India Case Initiative? With the ESMA mandate, which requires filing in IXBRL, every company in Europe will need a tool for creating the document in XBRO. We are one of the world's leaders in providing the tool. I will talk about it a little later. And the tool can cost anything from 5,000 euro to 20,000 euro or more. There are companies offering tools at a much higher price, and there are a few companies offering tools at a lower price. It's, but there is no avoiding the filing. It is true that ESMA is now, has now reconciled to pushing the mandate back by a year, but has left the lawmaking to individual countries. So each country will have the flexibility to either make it happen now or make it happen later. Some countries like Germany have decided not to postpone it. Some of the East European countries have decided to postpone it, but we are waiting for the European Parliament to pass the law and for each country to make up its mind. Even so, I believe even if it gets postponed, I think it will be good for Greece to continue with the mandate so that ultimately the quality of disclosures in Greece goes up dramatically on account of this mandate. So what is the what is what is our offer? What is the India Cares offer all about? We're actually saying we'll offer the software free for one year to all small cap companies. 
We're also saying we'll offer outsourced services free for one year for, the, for all small cap companies. We will also offer an audit tool for free for one year for all the small caps listed on the Athens Stock Exchange. You know, we're actually inspired by Pericles, who actually says what you leave behind is not what is engraved in stone monuments, but what is woven into the lives of others. All of us in India have grown up with the Greek philosophers, have grown up with a lot with, with understanding of Greek history, with also understanding of many of the Greek nobles who have left a huge impression on us. I still remember when I was in class nine, I was asked to summarize uh, Homer's Iliad, which I knew nothing about. So I had to buy an abridged copy to do that. So we have grown up reading a lot about Greek writers from, from our very young age. And I think this statement by Pericles is a, provides a very good understanding as to what we're actually saying. So what we want to leave behind is a spirit of partnership, a spirit of help, a spirit of assistance to Greek companies, to our current counterparts in Greek, Greece. We're also a small cap company listed in India, and we know what difficulties we are going through. We know the problems we are having in terms of our own cash flows. And therefore, we believe that by offering this, this will be one more step towards creating a long-lasting partnership between India and Greece. In today's world of diplomacy, while governments are important, the engagement between private sector companies is also very important. And we see this as a way to strengthen our own uh, uh, diplomats' hands in Greece when they come, when they deal with uh, Greek companies, the Greek government. So we are a company, we've been in the XBRL space for a long, long time. Uh, we have been seen as one of the biggest uh, top quality providers, as the table on the right hand side will actually show. Uh, in the US, they do a quarterly quality review, and we've been topping the quality charts everywhere. We do three things in this company. We help regulators collect data. We help enterprises create data for submission to the regulator. The world's biggest accounting firms are our partners. The world's biggest companies have been using our solution. Uh, the, some of the world's most uh, the strongest regulators, including those in Singapore, use our solution to collect data from the agencies that they regulate. So there are three people in the in the seminar today, and I have a message for each of them uh, in terms of taking it forward. I would I I have been to the Athens Stock Exchange. I met Nikos. Uh, we've had some very good meetings in the past. And uh, what I would love to do is to basically propagate the India Cares Initiative, working with the exchange to all listed companies in, in the Greek market especially the small caps. I also would like to work with the exchange and we will do all this at, without sending you a bill. We will come there at our own cost. We would love to train the market intermediaries and investors on how to leverage XBRL. And we want to help companies get the filings right. I'll tell you why this is very important. I was talking to Mr. Kiriakopoulos before the meeting started. I was looking at the website of the Hellenic Investor Association. So I've been looking at the whole action on Folly Folly and MLS recently. And I know at the end of the day, there's only so much that an exchange can actually do. The lawmaking by bringing in the IXBRL mandate will empower people like the Hellenic Investor Association to detect problems very easily. So when we tried to do a quality review of the MLS annual report for the last two years, we found that it's all in an image format. Converting it is very difficult. By moving to IXBRL, it will, it will be difficult for companies to hide from investors hide data from investors. I know MLS for the current year has not even published the results. So I think what we would love to do is to work with the stock exchange and work with Mr. Kiriakopoulos Hellenic Investor Association to be able to ensure that in this competition for capital, Greece is second to none across Europe. We would like to work with Greek companies. We would like to work with the Greek market leveraging XBRL to ensure that Greece is a preferred destination for foreign capital for foreign investors. And I think what will also have, make Mr. Matsopoulos very happy is if we can also work with the Greek government with the business registry and move more and more companies to XBRL. If even unlisted companies move to XBRL, you will actually find that the cost of borrowings of these companies actually will come down. This is a proven thing in many parts of the world. The World Bank has seen it. In Netherlands, companies filing in XBRL get a significant reduction in interest rates, and that's extremely important for them. I, I'm going to stop here and invite uh, my uh, my fellow panelist, Mr. Dimitris Karis, uh, Karaskakis, to say a few words. Uh, Dimitris? Anu, is Dimitris there? Yes, he's there. I'm just... Uh... Yeah.
Yes, can you hear me now? Yes, I can see you now. Okay, you can, I, can I share my, Please, thank you. my screen for a, thank you. Thank you. a small presentation? Can you hear, see it now? Uh, okay. Not yet. Yes, I can see it now. Thank you. Okay, okay. So, my name, thank you for inviting me in this uh, webinar. My name is uh, Dimitris Karaskakis and uh, I'm the Chief Technology Officer for the Athens Exchange Group. Uh, a small presentation on the uh, new, uh, not now new, but uh, the recent regulation on the XBRL. So, uh, a little words about our group. First, the Athens Exchange Group is the operator of the Greek cash, derivatives, and bond markets. We are a vertical degraded uh, exchange. That means that with uh, our new other companies, the Athens Clear and Athens CSD, we are operating not only the trading, but also the clearing, settlement, and the registry of the capital functions of the capital market. We are listed in the exchange uh, through, uh, since two, August of 2000, and we are fully privatized uh, since 2003. Recently, we joined the initiative of creating the Energy Exchange Group and uh, operating the new markets uh, of energy markets under the European target model. So let's now move to our uh, main topic, which is the uh, new, new European single electronic uh, format. So after the implementation of the Transparency Directive in October 2013, the European Union moved to the next stage, which was the establishment of a uniform reporting format for companies throughout Europe by defining this new European single electronic format. In 18th of September, December 2017, the European Securities Markets Authority, ESMA, published the final draft for the development of regulatory technical standards and thus creating the basis for a new uniform reporting format in the EU, which we call SF, a European single electronic format. The European Commission gave the green light by issuing two regulations one in December 2018, the regulation 2019-815, and uh, later on with a new version in uh, December 2019. What were the, are the key requirements for this new regulation? Since 1st of January 2020, all issues of European Union and the European Economic Area regulated markets are now required to prepare and publish their annual financial reports in accordance with the SF regulation. The EU regulated listed companies must produce their annual reports in the new format, which is an extensive hypertext markup language for all reporting periods beginning on or after 1st of January. The consolidated international financial reporting standards shall be marked up with tax and use the inline XBRL technology to make the consolidated data machine readable. So, in a human readable document, using tags embedded with an inline XBRL, we create a second view, which is machine readable. In this new regulation, a new taxonomy was created, the ESF taxonomy, which contains the same accounting concepts, concepts as the IFRS taxonomy, but includes labels in all EU languages. Extensions can be used in this taxonomy only if there are no existing IFRS tax to be used. And the anchoring of extensions are also used to be linked to the closest taxonomy element. There are two levels of tagging for in two phases. The first one is from now detailed tagging of uh, primary statements and from 2022 block tagging of notes. The regulation is expected also to be yearly updated on the basis of the IFRS taxonomy update. ESMA regulatory technical standards non, do not deal with storage, dissemination of regulated information, nor with the assurance or audit of financial reports. To whom this new regulation apply? The SF regulation applies to all issuers with securities admitted to trading on regulated markets under the obligation to make public annual financial reports in accordance with Article 4.1 of the Transparency Directive. 
Το annual financial reports containing financial statements for financial years beginning on or after 1st of January 2020. We have to note that the deadlines for the publications of the Transparency Directive remains unchanged, and the financial reports in this new format must be filled to the national committee authorities via the existing official appointed mechanism. We have to note for, for, for Greece, the Athex group is the official appointed mechanism. What were the objectives of this new regulation? The aims of this SF regulation were to make financial reports comparable regardless of language, structure and format, enable investors, authorities and issuers to analyze financial information by machine, and thus increase transparency in the EU and the European Economic Area regulated markets. Now, what does this mean for the companies? The ASF is a new format. For the first time, the consolidated financial statements of the EU listed companies will be freely available in the public domain in a machine readable format. That means that investors and other stakeholders will be able to search IFRS consolidated financial statements using computers as well as the human eye. How should the company start? Before making any updates, improvements or changes to current annual report preparation arrangements, the first step is to understand the requirements and consider how ISF may affect your company. You must become familiar with the new rules and taxonomy, review the current annual report preparation process, get ready to select and deploy a new software, and plan to update processes and controls. What about auditing? Will auditors be checking the SF compliant reports? The European Commission staff have suggested that the independent auditor should assure the new digital tagging. The Commission has asked the Committee of European Auditing Oversight Bodies to explore how the audit of the SF should be carried out in practice. There may be a mandatory requirement, which is for the regulators to decide. If not, it is possible that some listed companies will ask their auditors to check the SF tagging. So, at the end, for the companies, a considerable time and effort will be needed, additional costs for software and consultancy, and we have also to note that the bigger the company, the more departments will be involved. With this, I think I end my presentation. Thank you for your attention. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dimitris. It's Thank now you. my honor and privilege to invite uh, Mr. Kiriakopoulos, President of the Hellenic Investor Association in Athens, uh, one of the biggest beneficiaries of this whole XBRL mandate will actually be the investors, as uh, Dimitri just pointed out. So I believe uh, there is something that Mr. Kiriakopoulos will actually be able to talk about that. Mr. Kiriakopoulos? Hello again. Uh, I'm I'm sorry that I don't see the other participants. Um, I, don't I don't I don't see them on, on the video. Um, you forgive me, you must forgive me. Perhaps it's my in, in, incompetence in uh, uh, in Zoom discussions. However, I'll try to get on. So, uh, first of all, um, let me extend some uh, greetings to Your Excellency, the Ambassador of India, Mr. Gopal Ram, uh, Mr. Swaminathan, who who. You are the CEO of IRIS. Uh, Mr. Karaiskakis Dimitris, uh, you're as being the Chief Technology Officer of the Athex Group. Mr. Finan Matsopoulos, member of the Board of Directors of the Athens Chamber of Commerce and Industry in Athens. Um, I, I would like to, I, I, I know that everybody's participating is, is watching the US elections now. Uh, we don't know yet the aftermath of this, uh, this uh, shoulder to shoulder battle. I was uh, going, uh, uh, Your Excellency, the Ambassador, to inaugurate uh, Kamala Harris as being uh, uh, her, her grandfather is from uh, Thula Sendrapuram. Uh, and uh, they were giving a special, there's a temple there for special prayers for the inauguration of uh, Kamala Harris being the Vice President of the United States of America. Uh, indeed, however, uh, some Hindu gr group uh, was giving blessings for her rival, for Donald Trump. Uh, because uh, uh, there, there were rivals in India uh, between Democrats and Republicans, and Republics too. 
so Republicans too. So uh, this was uh, just a, a small joke. Uh, uh, I would like to thank uh, uh, Mr. Swaminathan for the for, for this uh, very flattering uh, invitation. Actually, we present a very proactive investors organization, which proposed to safeguard the interests of retail investors, both plain and sophisticated, towards all other stakeholders of the financial capital markets ecosystem. That is the stock exchange, the regulatory authorities of uh, Hellenic Capital Markets Committee, the Bank of Greece, and especially the Hellenic Accounting and Auditing Standards Oversight Board. This is the board which supersedes, uh, my friends, uh, it, uh, it supersedes, it, 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 it has to audit the auditors and it has to pay attention to the best practices. And, and they are very, uh, they're very familiar with your, with your appliance, with your applica the application of XPRL, and they, and actually, I read, I read, a, I read a, an article by the vice president of the auditors um, accounting and uh, auditing standards oversight board, Mr. Yanopoulos. Mr. Yanopoulos, whom you should uh, see directly, is the person uh, from ELTE. This is called Eliniki Epitropi Logistikis Tipopiesis Ke Elenchon. I'm sorry to say it in Greek, who has uh, write, written an article for the necessity to apply XBRL documentation application to, to all enlisted companies in Greece and directly and immediately. This is what he said. He said, we're going to, to, to make Greece the Denmark of South of, of Southeastern Europe in, in terms of integrity and accountability. I know that Mr. Karaiskakis is very, uh, he's a very knowledgeable person and he understands uh, very well. Uh, and the Affex group has done a tremendous job actually to implement uh, every modernization and every every regulation that has to be applied and in, in, implemented in Greece, and I know that he's very pro he's going to be very proactive with that. Now, uh, I will say three things. Uh, I will I will try. You know, I was, I was very enthusiastic when I read about Iris. I, I had to read all this documentation, which is not legal, which is not financial, but has to do with the investors' protection per se. Uh, fully, fully, it was one case that we have uh, undertaken actually in both civil and criminal courts, our case against Foley has been adopted by international uh, shareholder services. This is the, uh, today is the world's leading provider of corporate governance and responsible investment solutions, marketing intelligence and fund services. ISS governance, this is the website, has adopted our case because they are, they are undertaking, they're adopting uh, uh, class action suits uh, for uh, on behalf of investors against or around the world, so they have they have uh, they have called us, and actually we have a mass of uh, institutional investors uh, that have lost money. Actually, and I'm, I'm very sorry to, to hear that on folly, more than 450 million in bonds, more than of 400 million in equities, and this is this was this was uh, this was done because a number of persons of executive members of folly folly. Uh, the company itself, and another of and, and not, uh, big, and another uh, uh, part of uh, or people that have uh, uh, that have worked with them, and actually the auditors uh, have helped them, and uh, actually Mr. Kutsalios and, and his and his father, the father and, and the, the son, are now in prison. Actually, Hellenic Investors Association was the uh, the entity that pursued. Uh, to, the, uh, to the Attorney General, that those people had to be uh, incriminated for the for the crimes against our members' clients. So, um, if IXBRL was adopted, we wouldn't have seen such a problem. And you know, everybody in the stock market who loves the Greek stock market, who loves the stock market, stock market I love the stock market because without the stock market, there is no heartbeat. There is no heartbeat in the economy. Now, Greece. And I'm, I'm very happy to, to tell you that today the Greek market is very uh, is, 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 is going upwards. Uh, and I'm very happy to see that because I know that the people that are working within the enlisted companies are going, are going to be more hopeful that the economy is going to recuperate again from this terrible problem and all this decade that we have suffered. So uh, IHBRL will help if adopted to the companies be more transparent. It's going to be more easily accessible uh, to all the stakeholders. It will uh, create a playing level field for, for small and bigger investors, but not only in, in nationally and domestically, but internationally. 
it will make the financial reports more comparable. It will enable them to carry out automatic analysis. It, it is an implementation that will help the companies uh, to be, become, even the smaller companies, to have uh, to be visible. Because otherwise, uh, huge, well big, well, big asset managers will not take take, uh, take into account about the Greek uh, uh, companies, not more than five or six of them. But there are many jewels uh, companies in the stock market of Greece that should be should attract the attention of the international audience. Actually, I think that the Greek market is very suppressed, and I think it's, it has all the possibilities that to. I, 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 don't, I don't want to advise anybody on that. I know that it's not it's not uh, legally uh, feasible to do that. But I think that the Greek stock market will skyrocket in the next in next years. I believe that. I believe that the leadership of Greece is very good. I believe that all. People uh, they say, share the same the same uh, option. So why was is going to be helpful? Why your your application will be helpful? Uh, the automation small. Now I'm, I've read some statistics from the U.S. market. So that uh, they, they say that it is a significant step forward to level the playing field for small entities. That it will bring more opportunities for smaller and mid-cap companies, making it easier and less costly to potential investors to to attract it. Um, analysts will not only research a great number, can, can only research a great number, a, a, a greater number of companies, but can also take a closer look to the companies that they already follow, which supports better informed decisions. Uh, and actually, I have, I have, I have this uh, number in USA. Uh, the, the respective uh, uh, the respective association for financial uh, analysts noted that the cost of compliance for small public and listed companies has dropped 45 percent. From 2014 to 2014, with the annual annual cost decreasing from 10,000 to 5,000 euro uh, dollars, it, it has been done due to the use of IXBRL. So I think, uh, let's say, you know, swap analysis. I think Iris should should uh, should uh, go to the Greek companies, Greek and listed companies, and show them that their costs are going to be diminished, not increased. Actually, this is going to be a user-friendly application that will make them. Uh, for the fund managers and for the analysts to see the, the Greek companies very, very quickly, not waste time, and to a, to a model, uh, to, a, to a pattern that all others are, are, going, are doing that also in Europe and other countries in the United States. I think that I have uh, overlapped my time. I'm, I'm not very good in, uh, uh, in uh, keeping the time of my, of my presentation. I thank you so much. Uh, again, I'm, I'm going to tell you that we have been uh, accepted as being a member of the of the Better Finance, which is the Federation of uh, Investor Association of Europe. We're very proud of that for that, and uh, we hope that to, we will bring some uh, added value to that and our cooperation with you in, in Greece and in Europe too. Thank you, Efesto Paraboli. Thank you very very much, uh, Excellency. It's an honor to have you on the panel here today uh, to launch the India Cares Initiative. Uh, while reading your CV, I discovered that you and I went to the same college in Calcutta, in St. Xavier's College, Calcutta. Uh, the thing that's also interesting, when, when uh, John talked about uh, the company which he discovered a scandal in, around the same time, we had a jewelry company in India led by Nirav Modi, who also gave a huge amount of headache to government regulators. Uh, one suggestion that I had for Mr. Kiriakopoulos that I mentioned before the event started is that he can help Indian investor associations learn how to do class action suits against fraudulent companies in India. Uh, he's done a very good, uh, he's taken very good initiatives in Greece to protect investor interests. Today, SEBI in India allows investor associations to launch class action suits. I think the experience from Greece will be very, very valuable. So it's my honor and privilege to invite His Excellency, uh, the Ambassador of India to Greece, Ms. Amrit Logan, to launch the India Cares Initiative and say a few words. Sir, the floor is yours. Or should I say the screen is yours? Uh, uh, no, thank you very much. Uh, I hope I am audible. Loud and clear, sir. Uh, yeah, so I'll just unmute it. So, uh, good morning to all of you, to uh, Mr. Swaminathan, uh, for, uh, uh, on behalf of uh, Iris to take this initiative uh, under India Cares. Uh, uh, and I, I wish to congratulate him for this. Uh, for, uh, for the two um, previous speakers, it was very interesting. Mr. Dimitris uh, from the Chief Technology Officer, uh, whom I learned uh, that is doing a good job, and uh, 
also mr kiriakopoulos uh, president of hellenic investors association and about his experience uh, with using the system well i have uh, been in greece uh, just uh, three and a half months so i am just uh, uh, getting to know people unfortunately um, uh, you know the covid situation uh, has affected all of us uh, and when i arrived uh, in july uh, early july uh, uh, things uh, were very uh, quite conducive in greece uh, so i thought i have escaped uh, from india where things were very bad and come to a good place but in the last uh, as uh, a week uh, you know the, the little bit here uh, on the covid situation uh, situation steps from the in fact just from yesterday new measures have been uh, put in place and i wish uh, and i hope that these will uh, be effective uh, so that uh, you know the uh, the experience which other many of the european peers especially like france germany um, um, spain even italy the neighboring country are uh, going through a second wave i hope uh, it does not go especially when the winter months are coming uh, and on the other hand uh, we are happy to see that uh, in india the uh, peak rate has been uh, sir, uh, has uh, been passed and uh, in the last one week or so as per that statistical trend the uh, the situation is looking good that it is coming down and recovery rate is good death rate is still uh, much below the world average in fact with half, half than that so these are happy trends so uh, we hope uh, when we are coming to end of 2020 uh, you know, uh, we will uh, have a new uh, we'll have some new year to cheer uh, but in spite of that uh, thanks to technology we can uh, exchange on uh, the, the, on video conferencing and since my arrival um, uh, the, the we had this foreign office consultation uh, again to web Uh, based uh, between uh, the secretary general of foreign office here and uh, our uh, secretary his counterpart in india that was on 9th of october uh, then on just um, a few days back on 29th october uh, the two foreign ministers our external affairs minister and the greek foreign minister again had about a 40 minute uh, tele conversation so things uh, we have been doing um, uh, greek india relations uh, you know since uh, last year uh, especially after the formation of the new government here has been looking up uh, in the 84th thessaloniki international trade fair uh, which was held in 2019 september uh, which is a very prestigious event uh, from, uh, not only from the greek point of view but also from the uh, international point of view india was the honored country we are our uh, minister for of state for commerce uh, civil aviation uh, mr hardik puri uh, had led a big indian delegation we had a large uh, indian business people um, and uh, and as uh, the first speaker was saying the, the india greek uh, commercial relations though not big you know uh, has been stable but we hope to build on that and uh, in the area of uh, technology uh, uh, and uh, in other uh, like um, uh, small industries uh, defense uh, and uh, uh, agriculture so we hope to build on this where a uh, pharmacy is another area where uh, uh, both have synergies and india has a lot of, uh, has also lot of to offer uh, and similarly greek investors uh, are welcome to india a greek uh, is uh, in the uh, in the context of uh, european uh, union uh, policies uh, one of the three pillars is of course in, uh, in addition to environment is uh, digital technology use of digital technology is being stressed more and more and uh, fortunately greece is uh, uh, is now picking up very fast on that uh, it is also attracting lot of uh, investments uh, what i read uh, for example companies like amazon uh, deloitte Uh, uh, they have already uh, anywhere, but it has chosen Greece, uh, and I hope that these all these will fructify in the coming years. So things are uh, looking up, uh, though of course COVID um, uh, is uh, putting a bit of dampener, but uh, we hope it will be a very temporary phase. And therefore, uh, you know, as uh, 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 the European Union under the uh, ESMA. 
uh, uh, and uh, as uh, has been also rightly pointed out by the previous speaker, uh, now how when in the globalizing world, you know, uh, people can uh, use a lot of fraud and uh, when people are uh, putting their hard earned money, you, know, you need a good accounting uh, flow and a reliable one uh, you know, to know where uh, things are going. And uh, from this way, you know, technology is a big enabler in uh, what our experience is, uh, you know, in uh, smoothing out a lot of the fears which we feel. And it has uh, not only in the accounting side, but in India, for example, uh, we have had experience for, uh, for in the tax administration. And um, you know, the how uh, technology is being used uh, very extensively for filing of uh, Taxation, for example. Now, I, uh, for example, I myself giving a personal example, and I'm sure uh, many of them would have the same. The earlier one uh, used to, they were required to go, go physically, if not you or your representative, to a tax office to file returns, and uh, you know uh, it it would uh, it would not only be slow but uh, would give rise to so many other uh, you know, considerations uh, for, you know, for by 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 this. Uh, by these officers, but now everything can be done online, um, um, and only when there is some doubt uh, by the, uh, uh, the tax officer or the tax administration, uh, are you being sent any letters for clarification? Otherwise, your uh, uh, your return is considered final. So, and this has uh, helped two ways. It has made the administration very faster, transparent, and also. Uh, uh, instead of the tax uh, collection going down, it, it has gone up. So this this is just I'm saying one example. So I'm sure uh, in the area of uh, medium and small enterprises, they would also like to uh, go for accounting standard, which is fast, which is reliable, and which is internationally acceptable. And um, and, and I think what I have uh, gone through is uh, that is the objective of ESMA. And others, though, so that a uniform standard is used, and uh, you know, people are used, and also by having uniform standard, it is it is also uh, easier to regulate, to monitor, and to and to detect any uh, uh, any uh, say fraud or any uh, type of uh, uh, non-compliance which is going to happen, and it is very difficult for. The companies uh, to, you know, to hoodwink the system or to you know, come up with data uh, uh, which can be misleading and uh, and only when it is later discovered and by that time it may be too late the, uh, the the investors would have lost lot of money or the company would have lost lots of money and the people who have done the fraud would have disappeared which we see as uh, Mr. Swami Nathan gave the example of Mr. Nirav Modi whom the government is still after he. A lot of money, so I'm sure uh, uh, the, the, the Greece and uh, under the leadership of uh, Mr. Under the guidance of Ethics and uh, uh, the Investors Association, they are looking for the same thing, and uh, very happy to note also that in uh, doing so, the cost uh, uh, of uh, compliance rather than going up, it goes down, and it's also very uh, very user user friendly. I, 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 of course, like any new thing you know there there will be some initial fears but i'm sure when people get used to it uh, they will uh, they will become uh, more uh, happy and uh, and will promote it so with that i i would like to thank uh, mr swaminathan and his team uh, under iris for taking this initiative and offering uh, this uh, services free of cost and uh, i'm uh, sure that uh, the Greek side, and uh, similarly, I'm sure he will learn from also Greek side, you know, how to further uh, you know, uh, strengthen the system, which will be beneficial to both sides, uh, and uh, and uh, this will also be a uh, an, okay, a vehicle for promoting further India India Greek trade uh, and other commercial exchanges where there is a huge potential, but uh, because of perhaps uh, so many other things and maybe you know. Uh, the standards, following standards, etc., could be a hard work. Uh, but, uh, but I, for example, as a result of Thessaloniki Fair, there are some joint ventures which have been formed. Um, and we are happy to note that, and we hope more will uh, happen. And uh, uh, the services of Iris uh, and ESMA and uh, the 
services of ethics uh, and uh, this uh, Hellenic Investors Association would become very crucial. And I hope, uh, you know, um, um, consider that situation will allow that uh, Mr. Swaminathan and team uh, be able to visit Greece uh, soon and we, uh, we look forward to welcoming them for furthering this cooperation. Thank you very much and wish uh, this, uh, uh, this, this project a big success. Thank you very much. Excellency, thank you very, very much for your kind words. And uh, there are, we have two more speakers. And at the risk of embarrassing Mr. Fanis Matsopoulos, you know, when people look at good, when people look at good-looking men, they're called Greek gods. You know, oh. in the English language. And I think we have a Greek god in our midst here, in Mr. Fanis Matsopoulos. So in my company, one fourth of my my colleagues are women, and they're all looking at you and they're gawking at you. So you must start blushing, Mr. M Mr. Matsopoulos. So which is why you will be the last speaker so that people can keep looking at you. Well, in the meanwhile, I invite Anu, my colleague, to present the findings of a study that we did, reviewing the quality. This is a report that will be very interesting to the people from the Stock Exchange. We have reviewed the, the financials of 707 European companies, including 20 European, 20 Greek companies. So Anu will talk about the importance of getting it right. This is also a study that will be hugely valuable for the investor association and it will strengthen their hands significantly. It will show them how IXBRL can be used to improve quality of disclosures. Anu, floor is yours. Thank you. I hope uh, everyone is able to see my screen and, uh, and also able to hear. And uh, a very, very good morning to everyone. Very delighted to have you in the webinar. So we have uh, some very distinguished speakers who've uh, given us uh, you know, insights on this new mandate and uh, how things are gonna roll out. And, uh, in this uh, next few, 10 minutes, what we want to focus is why is getting the quality important and why is this whole new regulation for uh, Greek companies very important? So this is gonna be the theme of the next 10 minutes, which I'm gonna to present to you. And first of all, for any listed company, why should you take quality seriously? It is for two reasons. One is because uh, regulators take quality seriously. And the second reason is because your investors take quality seriously. So, you know, in many, many countries uh, around the world, I think uh, there've been a lot of, uh, and some of which were deliberate, some are intentional, some are not intentional. But when you uh, hear uh, big scams like Enron in the US, Wirecard in Germany, it brings a lot of uh, chaos in the financial, uh, uh, financial systems, right? So therefore, uh, regulators need a quick and easy way to find uh, reporting inconsistencies, any kind of early detection of frauds, et cetera, in a quick and easy manner. And that is what this ESIP reporting is gonna help, uh, you know, regulatory bodies like, you know, stock exchanges, business registries, et cetera. And this specifically is uh, for ESMA is specific to the uh, capital markets and the security commissions, right? And the second reason why you need to take in uh, overall uh, quality seriously is because uh, investors actually invest in companies where they are uh, you know, strong in financials. So if your annual report as a listed company, if your annual report has mistakes in it, that's enough for an investor to lose trust and, uh, and building trust is not easy. So I think these are two good reasons why you should take quality seriously. And uh, they, we've kind of seen uh, in a lot of a lot of companies across the world that there are mistakes in the reports. These are all published reports. These are all audited reports. And there are mistakes which can be either classified due to carelessness, like, for example, in, uh, in, the, uh, in America, there is this company called GE, which is, which is a large uh, Fortune 500 company, which got a number wrong in their annual report. So they reported 104 billion of money invested outside the U.S., but for regulatory reporting purposes, for XBRL, they reported 104 million. So you can kind of imagine the impact of something like this. And similarly, there is a bank called Axis Bank in India, which is a leading bank uh, in, in the country, by the way. So they had a mistake which was running into many, many millions. And when we identified it, and when we uh, you know, reported this to Axis Bank, the answer that we got from them that this was a typing mistake or a typo, right? So a number which can run into such a big amount is uh, classified by this large leading bank as a type four. So you can imagine. While some of them are not deliberate, some of them are uh, definitely uh, deliberate, like the Enron, Wirecard, et cetera. But what is going to happen with this new reporting, which is called uh, ESEF, as described sometime back uh, by the uh, Aiden Stock Exchange? 
So with this ESF uh, regulation coming into place, regulators will now be able to scan information much easier. Uh, right now, companies are submitting the annual reports in PDF files. But now that the annual report will be in a digital reporting format, information can be uh, you know, sliced and diced very easily. So it's just like a camera. So wherever you go these days, there are CCTV cameras that actually uh, keep a watch of what, uh, what is happening in and around. So XBRL is like one of those uh, CCTV cameras that keeps a watch on what's happening. And as a regulator, as an investor, they can do many, many things with this data now being in a digital reporting format and in a machine readable format. So what we want to present to you uh, is a, about a study that we did at IRIS. So we as a company, we are very, very passionate about XBRL and we'd like to kind of see how XBRL can bring in a change in the way companies function, regulators function, investors function, etc. So one of the things that we wanted to see is that, of course, we uh, analyze companies across the world. We do it in the US, we do it in UK, we do it in South Africa and in many, many parts of the world. So what we wanted to do, especially in, in case of uh, Europe and Greece, is that we wanted to take a look at what the companies are reporting at this point in time. We also wanted to see if, because of the change in reporting from PDF to a digital reporting format, which is inline XPRL, is there going to be any benefit for the companies in terms of uh, you know, the information they are reporting, whether it's gonna be more comprehensive and you know, if there are any kind of uh, improvements that will be beneficial for the company. We also wanted to see, by the way, uh, the regulator here is ESMA, which is at the European Commission level, at the EU level. And ESMA has released a dictionary of concepts called taxonomy. And every company is supposed to pick the elements from the taxonomy to the extent possible and create custom elements only when needed. So we also wanted to see how aligned is the ESMA taxonomy. So in this manner, we've done a study of about 700 odd companies, but we will be definitely expanding the scope to much higher number of companies. So now what we'll see in the next few slides is about our findings of what, we do, what did we do and what are the results of the study. So the met met methodology that we adopted is that we took a sample of 20% uh, of all listed companies, which is around 710 companies. And in each country, we made sure that we had a sample of a minimum of 10% of the listed companies in that country. We also wanted to make sure there is a balanced mix of big companies and small companies. Of course, in some uh, countries like France, Germany, we also expanded the scope of uh, the number of companies to a higher limit. So what did we do? We identified the sample. We converted the annual reports. We downloaded the annual reports from the website. We converted into IXPRL using our product Iris Carbon. Once the overall IXPRL creation was done, we ran this output files with a validator. And then we got two types of results. One was a rounding off mistakes, which we ignored because that's fine. But the rest were genuine reporting mistakes, which we further went ahead and analyzed. So this is like a quick glimpse of the effort. So you can see that we've taken the sample of 710 companies across 27 countries in Europe, 27 industries, 50 experts were involved, XBR experts were involved in uh, doing this entire activity. And you can see that we have around you know, 95,000 concepts that we have tagged. So the effort has been humongous here. And this is how the results look like. So in a total of 710 companies, there were close to about 10% of uh, mistakes in these companies, you know, which is about like 9% here, as you can see here. So this means that these are audited reports, but yet there are mistakes. The question is how did these mistakes creep in and how did this was not identified until now? And specifically, if we see Greece, uh, I think Greece has kind of done uh, better. So out of 20 companies that we went in and analyzed, there was only one company which had a mistake accounting to 6% of- no, 20 is 5%, not 6%. Oh, so, sorry. This mistake, so sorry. So here, these are uh, some of the companies that we have gone ahead and uh, analyzed. So you can see that there is Hellenic uh, Telecommunications, there's National Bank of uh, Greece, there is, uh, uh, you know, uh, Eurobank, etc. So these are some of the companies in Greece that we have gone ahead and covered for the study. And next few minutes, I'd like to speak what were these mistakes and where, where were these mistakes, the highest amount of mistakes was actually what we call as totaling mistakes, which accounting to 74%. So totaling mistakes is nothing but a one plus one is supposed to be two, or if there's a rounding of mistake, it could be like a three, but a one plus one cannot be five. So, but to our surprise, we saw that the highest number of mistakes were all totaling mistakes. 
this was followed by what we call as mismatch values. Mismatch values like, for example, you have uh, cash in the balance sheet as 100 million, but you report maybe 110 million in the cash flow. So two different numbers for one concept. Similarly, incorrect signs was the next category where uh, you know, you're know you supposed to report a number as positive, but you report it as a negative and vice versa. And there was 1% of companies which actually got their dates wrong. Now that we know what are the type of mistakes, now let's see where were these mistakes that, that we're kind of identifying. 52% of the mistakes was in the cash flow statement followed the equity statement. So as we are aware, the cash flow statement and the equity statements are slightly complex statements compared to the balance sheet income statement and the comprehensive income. And therefore the highest number of mistakes were actually found in these statements. So therefore as listed companies, uh, when you're going to prepare yourself for the ease of reporting, you may definitely want to take a closer look at how you're preparing the cash flow statement and equity statement for IXPR purposes. And this was followed by balance sheet, uh, comprehensive income and income statement. And you also wanted to go ahead and see where these mistakes in big companies or small companies, usually there is a notion that the small companies are the ones who are prone to doing mistakes because of not having a bigger reporting team, not having big budgets, et cetera. And the large companies are supposed to have strong processes, much more streamlined uh, uh, ways of working, et cetera. But to our surprise, again, what we kind of saw uh, with the data that we analyzed is that the highest number of mistakes were actually not from small companies, but from the large and the mid cap companies. You can see that out of the total companies that we analyzed, uh, you know, 66 had mistakes, but 40 of them were actually big companies and the rest were actually small companies. And we also wanted to see which industry had uh, the highest mistakes. Again, here, what we saw is that, you know, banking, insurance and financial services sector, if you're a firm in this sector, uh, you know, you may again want to pay a very close attention of how you're uh, doing your IXPR because from our overall uh, sample that we have gone ahead and uh, analyzed, we saw that the highest mistakes was in the banking insurance and the financial services sector, which is supposed to be one of the very critical sector for any economy. This was followed by mistakes in the consumer goods and services, manufacturing, real estate, and so on. So in short, what we saw is that the complexity of reporting has a direct correlation with the volume or the number of mistakes that, that was there in that particular industry. Here is an interesting table that we'd like to kind of present. And uh, here, what we did was, as I mentioned in the beginning, ESMA has given a list of variables uh, and companies are expected to take a look at the list of variables provided by ESMA and use those concepts. For example, if I have revenue and if there's a variable in the uh, ESMA list, which is called revenue, I'm supposed to use that tag. So what we did was that there are some concepts of companies where they may not have that particular concept in this you know, master variable list provided by ESMA. So in this case, they can go ahead and create extensions. So what we saw was that out of the 710 companies that we had gone ahead and tagged and analyzed, there were close to 10% of companies that needed extensions, which means 10% of company disclosures were not standardized uh, as per, or they were not aligned with the ESMA uh, concepts. These were all very company specific uh, disclosures or industry specific disclosures. And therefore these needed custom elements. And the highest amount of custom elements was again, in the banking, insurance, and financial services sector, real estate, and utilities. Again, you can see that the percentage of extensions is higher. It's 14%, 12 and 11 respectively. And this is much higher compared to the average uh, you know, extension percentage of 10%. And one of the reasons why you're paying a little emphasis on this slide is, is for the fact that companies, as per the ASIP regulation, are, created, are required to create extensions only when it is necessary, right? And therefore, there are many, many softwares for ease of reporting that say that, you know, creating of extensions is automated and, you know, it happens on the fly, et cetera. But as a company, you are supposed to go ahead and review your extensions. You're supposed to go ahead and see the extensions and then only approve it. So if you're not able to see the extensions, which is getting created, you're approving something that you're not seeing, seeing about. This is also going to go to your auditors. And therefore, it's also important that your auditors also should have tools that allow them to go ahead and see extensions and the tagging. So therefore, do not be in a black box. It's very important that you get full visibility of what is being tagged, what extensions are being created, so on and so forth. And again, next two, three minutes, what I'd like to speak about is that the companies that we have gone ahead and tagged and the mistakes that we found out, how did we get to identify these mistakes? So we'll take examples, four examples of each of the categories that I explained just some time back. The first category was totaling mistake. So this is a cash flow statement here. 
And in the cash flow statement, the company has a total of 181. And once we tagged this entire cash flow statement, and when we ran a validation check, there was a validation warning which said that there are some calculation inconsistencies. So there is a check which is called calculation check. So as per this check, it showed that what the company has reported is 181,000, but the actual total should be a minus 18, and therefore there is a difference. Similarly, for the next category, which is which, which is called mismatch values, we tagged the annual report, uh, or an income statement of a particular company. The company has profit for the year 10,187,228, and this 10,187,228 is further divided between you know parent and non-controlling interest, and then again they have the total. So ideally, these two numbers should be same. And when we tag this whole statement, we ran the validations. There was this check which said there are duplicates. As you can see here, there's a check which is called duplicates. And as per this check, they cannot be two different numbers for one profit or loss for a particular period. So in this case, it triggered an alert saying that, hey, by the way, for your concept, which is called profit loss that you're reporting, you have two different numbers for a single reporting period. Similarly, the next one is actually even more scary. This is uh, again from an income statement of a company. They have an operating profit of 27,308 and they have some expenses, which is 902 um, euros. And therefore the, they're supposed to report a profit before tax, which they have in uh, the text. But if you see the number, they have actually reported a loss. So this could be like a very disastrous situation for any investor. And the company has actually reported a profit, but you know they've, uh, they have shown it as a loss you know, by mistake. So this again was flagged off but the same calculation check where it shows that this is the number that you've reported as a loss, but actually this should have been a positive number. Probably this was again, one of those typos or you know somebody got a parenthesis there instead of showing it as a positive value. Therefore the experiment machine runs this check and identifies with a click of a button that there's a difference here. And the last one is again, very, very surprising. So the company has reported its annual report, a cash flow. When we tag the whole statement, we, we again got a check it says there are two different numbers for one concept, which is which is called you know receipts of sale of goods. And when we saw, we saw that the company got the headers wrong. So somebody did just a manual copy paste of the current period with the prior period, therefore bringing in wrong information out here. So while these are some very quick examples of how information becomes more visible to regulators, to investors in a machine readable format, it's kind of very, very important that you make sure that you have the right software, the right services, and the right setup for you to go ahead and comply with ESEF. So in short, what we want to kind of say is that there are many, many options available in the market for you to go ahead and comply with ESEF. I think we just want to give you a few recommendations that we definitely think you should kind of take a serious look at. So you can purchase any software. There are many softwares in the market. Always make sure that the software that you're going to use has the ability to go ahead and validate the tagging that you're doing, you know, things like omission, things like the inconsistencies, which we just showed you, you should be able to run it yourself and see it yourself. Only then, you know, what's there in your report. It's also recommended that uh, you use a collaborative software because here there's, uh, there's going to be a lot of, uh, you know, back and forth uh, in the annual report preparation process. There's also auditors who need to audit the ESAP documents. So collab collaborative software anytime will allow you to have a more streamlined process. And for ESIF, like I said, there are many, many softwares which are available in the market, but there are certified softwares by XBRL International. XBRL International is the global consortium that maintains and regulates the XBRL standard. So make sure that the software that you're gonna purchase is an XBRL International certified one. There are also softwares that have uh, participated in the SMART trial uh, tests. So, you know, you could check for the, those aspects as well. And like I said, very, very important that uh, whatever you are using whether it's a software or a service, you should be able to go ahead and see what is being created, which means you should be able to see things like extensions, anchoring relationships, and the taxonomy which is being created for you. So it's kind of very important that you have full visibility of what is being produced as part of this new regulatory reporting format. Of course, with a combination of good you know, software and uh, you know, with limited training, I'm sure even if uh, this is a new topic for most companies, you will be able to go ahead and comply with this process. So I think it's important to get started. And uh, that is why we thought it's important for us to share our experience of how this entire reporting is gonna impact you as a company and your investors and from a regulatory reporting perspective. With this, I come to end of uh, my presentation. Over to you, Swami. Thank you, Anu, thank you. And uh... 
it's my privilege now to invite Fanis to come and say a few words. Uh, I think the message I want to convey to Fanis through him to the Chamber of Commerce is that even though the ESMA mandate is primarily for listed companies, there is significant value if even unlisted companies start using XBRL. Because, you know, we've actually found in countries like the Netherlands, unlisted companies by submitting data in XBRL to banks have brought down the cost of borrowing. If the cost of borrowing comes down, it makes the companies more competitive. And if it makes the companies more competitive, I think it ultimately is a significant boost to the economy. So my submission to you is, you may want to look at the possibility of expanding the scope of XBRL filing, even for unlisted companies and talk to the government about it through the Chamber of Commerce. Over to you, Fanis. Your Excellency Ambassador uh, D. Roll, uh, as Chancellor of the Board of Directors of the Athens Chamber of Commerce and Industry, responsible for the enhancement of Hellenic-Indian trade in relations, I would like to express to you that I feel honored and privileged to participate in these esteemed professionals and institutional representatives. During the last 20 years period, international trade has reached incredibly highly vol high volumes, thanks to globalization. As you are all aware, multi-billion dollar agreements have taken place at lightning speed, creating gigantic organization structures that promote innovation, social and economic welfare. As you all know, prior to that tremendous economic expansion from time to time, financial statements have shaken the business community by increasing the uncertainty among the business companies and entrepreneurs. Who can forget, as the Irish representative shown, showed previously, the Enron scandal? No one. But that took, pla that, that took place many years ago, at times when markets were not so highly correlated. <clears throat> I apologize. Now, we both as individuals and also required the implementation of protection layers in order to minimize the odds of fraudulent acts on corporate and accounting levels. The European Securities Market Authority, the ESMA, as we refer it shortly, has clearly made the first step towards a more legitimate, transparent procedure on accounting presentation by setting as mandatory the IXBRL extension format for listed companies in EU markets. It might not stop here. The ESMA should be the role model uh, based on which local governments, the Greek, the Netherlands government, the German, the French, can cooperate and create a security frame that all, please be careful, all non-listed entities should report in the same format their financial statements. Especially during the COVID crisis, small and medium-sized companies that are considered on world buys and European level as the back of the economy must be protected against ruthless corporate renegades and must be able to safely concentrate on their core business rather than checking the financial statements of potential partners. I'm not here to promote uh, India Care as a program, but I'm here to congratulate Iris and every single company that operates under the free market conditions to provide services that are directly related to the word, sorry, transparency. I believe that there is a global d dharma debt that prevails globally according to which all of us must try to eliminate accounting and any kind of frauds and promote healthy business relationships. I'm optimistic that Indian care can be used by Greek companies, by the Greek government, by Greek state-owned companies in order to move toward personally, are always at your disposal for any further assistance.
Thank you, Mr. Matsubunas, for your, for your words. Uh, we're happy to take any questions, if people have any questions. We'll just give it a minute or two. And Mr. Kirikopoulos, I hope the presentation by Anu showed you how IXBRL can be used to strengthen the activity of the association to anticipate problems. But I think what would be even more interesting is if we can work with the association to prevent companies from making mistakes in the first place. I think the important thing is not to catch a thief, but to prevent the stealing from happening before it happens. Prevention is better for the market. Indeed. Actually, uh, I would like to have a, a, the opportunity to, uh, with our financial consultants and uh, um, our general uh, secretary, Mr. Uh, George Kriakopoulos, this is a, a synonym, he's not, he's not, he's not a, a relative to mine, to have the opportunity to do some uh, case studies with you. Uh, because uh, as you probably have known, we are participated to all general uh, assemblies of the banks and have put uh, uh, rather uh, strong questions uh, because we, we feel that as as higher as the penetration of the, the infiltration of the, the eye of the investor is, the, the easier it is, it is to, to, for him to be attracted. Uh, indeed, I, will, uh, uh, I would like to see more about it and uh, please uh, use us in any uh, way you think that it would be good for you to penetrate the market. We believe that it's very good uh, for everybody. Dimitris, we would love to see whether we can actually show companies listed on the market how to prevent such mistakes. We are not here to sell the software. Greece and India are bound by centuries-old relationship. I think we have a stake in each other. We have a vested interest in each other's growth. So we would love to work with Athens Stock Exchange to ensure that companies are aware of the pitfalls and how they need to take this very seriously and to show them what mistakes are being made so that we ultimately create a market in Greece which is healthy. Dimitris? Can I just, can I just add one point? Please. Uh, while, while using uh, the paradigm of MLS, and which is a case that we're going also to do in a class action uh, you know, uh, for investors, uh, we're going to, st to start an injunction against the company because as you have uh, participated and you read, uh, it is, uh, unfortunately, it becomes a small folly folly in Greece. What we saw was that the financial accounting of, of the firm uh, was not accessible to us. So we went with the Capital Markets Committee and we asked for this, uh, for this, uh, for this uh, uh, inquiry that the auditors uh, uh, division that I said, I told you before, the auditors, the ELTE, the, the, which is responsible for the auditing of the auditors, would like to see the report because we are investors and we have the, we have the interest, the, the personal interest to read. read. And the Capital Markets Committee didn't give it to us at the beginning. We had to go and issue a, a, an Attorney General's uh, um, order by the courts. If the, the, the software was in place and we had the, 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 and if the MLS was obliged to do that, then we wouldn't have seen such problems. 16 million of, of, of their bonds are now in default. You know how many people have uh, attracted our association? More than 150. And yeah. they're very, they're very bitter. They're very sorry. I know this happens also in Europe, like Wildcard. That's why I think this is if the preponderance of European, of ESMA, is to do it as, as a unified, uh, uh, you know, um, um, way for all enlisted companies, and not only enlisted companies, as you said before, in our, around Europe. Otherwise, Europe will die after the pandemic. No, if I the think I think if the European capital market is not resurrected, as, as I'm putting, but not, they're not my words, they're words of a high caliber uh, European uh, dignitaries, then it will, it will die after the pandemic. It's a very dire situation in Europe right now. I think, I think from my interaction with the stock exchange in Athens, uh, I met Nico several, Nico several times. I think they're extremely committed to creating a very healthy, vibrant capital market. They're also a private company, and I think my compliments to them. I think at the end of the day, they can create the legal framework. And ultimately, if I'm hungry, I have to eat myself. They will create the framework for good disclosure. And people like you, people like us, need to take advantage of it to spot problems and bring it to their attention. 
Dimitris, over to you. If I may say, yes. Uh, first of all, the framework is not created by the Athens Stock Exchange. It's created by ESMA. the regulators ESMA. and the ESMA. ESMA first and the regulators follow with the sure. local legislation. Sure. So uh, our care is to harmonize uh, our uh, process and our systems to be uh, intact and to be in line with uh, this new regulation. In your first question, because I was uh, cut off from uh, before, is that uh, the following days we can have some talks with the uh, persons with, uh, the, from your side to see how we can organize the uh, presentation about this uh, new offer of uh, your company. I think. Okay. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. We are completely committed to this. Uh, if there are any other questions, and honestly, finance, the big value will come from overall reduction in the cost of capital. When the cost of capital comes down for all companies, I think the economy gets onto a wonderful path. Today in India, 30,000 companies, including private and public, are submitting data on XBRL. Today, the central bank in India is using XBRL to catch banks and to improve the quality of disclosure. We are right now in the process of having the insurance companies beginning to adopt XBRL. So I think the value is huge. The most important thing I want to mention to you is the adoption of XBRL can create a huge number of jobs in Greece. Greece can be the center for providing solutions to all of Europe. And I think uh, that's something, again, you might want to be, might want to be mindful of. Because from the, from the point of view of India-Greece India relationship, I think setting up uh, facilities for training Greeks who can then offer services and tools to all of Europe is a huge possibility. I mean, you can do your calculation. There are 4,000 companies across Europe, and the average spend per company is about 10,000 euro. That's the size of the market. And I think it will be, given, given the stage of economy of, of Greece, I think Greece is extremely well-placed to take advantage of this market. Fanis? Uh, especially nowadays that the Greek government is implementing uh, 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 measures that will attract foreign direct investments that are directly related with infrastructures uh, like the Microsoft case, which we will have a huge cloud data Right. especially yours that is very highly is highly sophisticated yes. and it has measurable results yes. you have measurable results already tested on greek companies yes. it doesn't matter the size or the the field the sector that the companies operate one way or another it will come to a point that all of the companies that want to establish uh, viable relationships with foreigners, they will need to report on an, on a globally accepted way. Populous uh, mentioned a few minutes earlier. It's a matter of economic and social justice. Yes. We need to protect the minor shareholders, the small investors, that are trying to create wealth for them and their families. Your application, in my opinion, delivers th this purpose. Absolutely. So I, uh, before I conclude, I want to thank two people who actually made this possible from the embassy side, uh, Mr. Nirmesh Kumar and Mr. Gopal Ram. I'm extremely grateful to you. I'm also grateful to the audience who have actually come here, some of whom are, available, are on Zoom many of whom have actually gone to YouTube. I think there's a significant awareness in Greece for this. And Mr. Kiriakopoulos, very soon you will be out of a job because there'll be no companies in, Greek, in Greece having a fraud. They will all be absolutely wonderful companies. So you will have to look for a legal practice in some other activity. And that's the hope that we come with. On that note, efforts to Parapoli. Thanks, Edwalenika. I can't speak Greek, but I've tried my level best. Thank you very much, very, very much. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I think we've just got some uh, questions uh, asking uh, who, who can be contacted if anything is needed. You can uh, drop in an email to info at iriscarbon.com and uh, we are happy to discuss on the next steps. I think there are some questions on next steps, etc. So feel free to drop an email to info at iriscarbon.com. And we'll be happy to answer any queries and questions that you may have. Thank you everyone for participating in today's webinar.
and have a lovely day. Thank you.